Hey everyone, with all the talk of chaos at the pumps, I recently went to my local petrol station and discovered that the air pump for your tyres, the one to inflate them, now costs money. I asked the guy at the till and he said that's inflation for you, get it? Unfortunately though, inflation in the economic sense of the word is not a joke, and much like the disgraced former governor of New York, it's been creeping up on people for some time. This has mostly been hidden by the fact that people aren't buying as many big ticket items as they used to, train tickets going out, that sort of a thing, so their credit bills are able to withstand it a bit better. Nonetheless, food and energy prices have been rising fairly quickly and it's somewhat scary when you go to see how quickly the price of meat for instance is going up. My son has a book that tells you that cows go moo and chickens go cheap but they're certainly not going very cheap at my local supermarket. There is an expression that fish can't see water and unfortunately that's kind of where the public seem to beep when it comes to price rises unless there are big items like a car or a phone. With the latter of those I guess Apple really is one of the most futuristic companies out there in so much as the price has already taken into account the next 10 years worth of inflation. Either way, when interest rates are eventually forced to rise, the situation could very quickly and dangerously turn critical, with inflation jumping into at least double digits and cash savings being destroyed in the space of two or three years. Personally, I've got most of my money tied up in stocks and shares, because it's nice to have some company. Get it? The current situation has arisen for two reasons. Number one, the boring one. Specifically, 18 months of the public staying at home and not spending money has led to a glut of pent-up saving, all of which is happening at the same time when supply issues have already led to increased prices and a demand for higher pay, thus causing an inflationary spiral upwards. Or number two, the more conspiratorial one, that governments around the world are up to their eyeballs in debt and are desperate to spin the economy up so the inflated money supply overtakes the debt burden. If they can keep things under control, then they'll slowly hammer that debt ratio downwards, just like they did after the Second World War. You know, where your opinion lies largely comes down to whether you think the world is run by scheming Machiavellian puppet master geniuses who are three steps ahead of everyone, or whether it's just a random mess with nobody in control of anything. But we do maybe have some lazy and rather negligent people happy to claim credit for their part in an economic system, at least when it works. Uh, an economic system that nobody really understands. So who would you like to be in charge? The New World Order, or literally nobody? I don't really know which of those is scarier, actually. Here's a joke to close, though. How many conspiracy theorists does it take to change a light bulb? The real question, of course, is who broke the light bulb and why are they keeping us in the dark? Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.